If you can't capture the attention of your audience, the rest of your funnel is going to be obsolete. And if you're using paid ads, well, you're going to be completely wasting your money. Hey, I'm Lisa Hugo, and I am obsessed with helping other people find their voices so they can go out and take on the world, be seen as an authority, an expert, and grow their business by sharing that knowledge and expertise with others. Now, I studied performing arts, and I spent 20 years of my career traveling the world as a professional singer-songwriter. I teach you the secrets to speak up and be heard, overcome your fears, and then use these skills to build a business and a life that you love and that could change both your own life and the lives of others. This is your one-stop shop for all things that are going to help you to build a life on your terms. This is Impact Through Voice. Well, hey there, friends, and welcome to this week's episode of the Impact Through Voice podcast. I'm your host, Lisa Hugo, and today I want to clear up some confusion that a lot of coaches, consultants, experts have when they're first starting out with their businesses. So today I'm raising the question, which might be in your mind or it might not be, but I think it's important that it is, do I need a website or do I need a funnel to get started and get clients. Well, I've got a little secret for you. A website is a great place for you to showcase your business, but what you really need to focus on first in your business is to build a funnel. Before we go any further, I wanted to let you know that I have created a free guide to help you to understand funnels and even get started with your first funnel. I'm sharing solid strategies, the different kinds of funnels that you could implement into your business. I'm sharing keywords that you should understand when it comes to marketing. And I'm also sharing how you can optimize your funnel once you've got it up and running. It's really valuable. I hope you find it helpful. All you need to do is go to lisahugo.com forward slash funnel blueprint. That's lisahugo.com forward slash funnel blueprint. And I'll also put a link to it in the show notes below. Okay, let's continue on. Now, I know that might sound counterintuitive and maybe even a little bit overwhelming, especially if you're new to marketing and sales. But don't worry, because I'm here to break it down for you in a very simple and a very straightforward way. Oh, and before I go on, if you think as a coach and an expert in your field that you don't need to know about marketing and sales, that is crazy. I mean, every business needs marketing to get in front of the right audience. And every business needs sales, no sales, no business. So your ability to sell your products and services is going to come down to these two elements, marketing and sales. So today, we're going to talk about what a funnel is, why it's more effective than a website when it comes to getting clients and how you can create a top of funnel strategy that grabs your audience's attention right from the start. Because trust me, if your top of funnel, your very first point of contact isn't strong, then the rest of your funnel is going to be insignificant. So let's dive into what a funnel is and why it's crucial for getting clients. Okay, so we're going to start with the basics. What exactly is a funnel? Okay, a funnel is exactly what the title depicts. It has a big entrance at the top and it narrows down to a very small exit at the bottom. But I'm going to break it down. A traditional website, as I said, serves more like your digital brochure for your business. It explains who you are and it's where people are going to go to learn about your business. They're going to read your blog or they're going to fill in a contact form. But a funnel guides an action. It's designed to lead visitors towards a specific outcome, like subscribing to your newsletter or downloading a free cheat sheet or a free PDF, something which is going to give them information, or maybe it's a free video, or maybe it's leading them to a free webinar. And I talked a lot about webinars last week. But basically, it's a series of steps that are designed to lead your potential clients 
toward a very specific action, whether that's booking a call or signing up for your newsletter or buying your course. So I want you to think of a funnel as a well-paved path that guides your audience to a desired outcome. So every step is clear, it's purposeful, and it makes it easy then for your potential clients to know exactly what to do next. Whereas a website, your visitors can get lost. It's like a maze of information. And a funnel has a very clear direction. It's like having a friendly guide for your audience who shows them exactly what the next step is and how to finally get to that point of a decision. But today I want to go even deeper and I want to break down the different stages of a funnel, the various types of funnels that you can use, and I'm going to give you some key marketing terms that are going to help you to understand how to make these funnels work for you. So let's start off with the different stages of a funnel. Now, A funnel isn't just one step. It's a series of stages, and each stage has a unique purpose. So we're going to start with the top of funnel. I already mentioned those words earlier on, but maybe you're not even sure what that means. Well, the top of funnel is the biggest part of your funnel, and that's where you're creating awareness. This is where you're going to attract your potential clients or the visitors, and at this stage, You're basically making them aware of who you are and what you offer. And the key is to grab their attention with very clear, empathetic and authoritative communication. And you might do this by offering a freebie or a you put out a compelling social media post that leads them to download something or to watch a free video or get more information. Or you might even use a paid ad to bring them then into your world. Now, I feel like this is one of the most important stages of a funnel because if you can't capture the attention of your audience, the rest of your funnel is going to be obsolete. And if you're using paid ads, well, you're going to be completely wasting your money. Okay, let's move on to the middle of funnel. This is where they're considering. So people know who you are, but they need more information to decide if they want to work with you. And so this is where you can nurture your leads by providing valuable content that is going to address their pain points and show them then the benefits of working with you. So this could be through an email sequence, a series of emails, um, could be going to a webinar where you can offer immense value. And if you're not sure about what is a webinar and how can a webinar um add value to my business, then go check out last week's episode. I'll put the link in the show notes below. Or you might send them to a sales page or a page that has case studies and testimonials, right? This helps to solidify their trust in you and your authority on your topic, leading them further down the funnel and closer to a buying decision. Okay, the next step is the bottom of funnel. So this is the most narrow part. We've weeded out a lot of the people who are not even going to get to this stage because they're not optimal for what we are offering, and at least not yet. So at this point, we're really getting down to business. This is where your potential clients are ready to make a decision. You've already established trust. You've demonstrated that you're an expert. So now it's time for them to take that action. So this could be that you're inviting them to a free discovery call with you. It could be that you're offering a limited time discount buy now, or it could just be a direct call to action to purchase because you've already established enough trust. And it will depend also on the price point of what you're offering. Okay, and the last stage is the post-purchase stage. I think a lot of people ignore this part of the funnel. This is where you retain your customers. You take them on a longer journey. You nurture them and you turn them into advocates for your business. So you want to keep them engaged, keep providing excellent value on the back end and encourage them to then refer other people to you. Okay, so that's a description of what a funnel is and what the different stages are intended to do. So depending on your business goals, 
then you can use different types of funnels to guide your potential clients on their journey. But I'm, I'm going to break down four of the most popular ones. The first one is what we call a QR funnel. That's a quick result funnel. So this is going to guide people to a specific landing page or an offer. So it's a very great way to grab attention very quickly, especially if you're speaking at an event or you've got a physical product, people can quickly maybe scan a QR code and they're immediately taken to the next step in the funnel. It's like signing up for a free resource or booking a call. Now, the BR funnel, big results funnel, or we could call it a bridge funnel, that's designed to connect the dots between what people know and what they need to know to make a purchase decision. So it usually involves a very simple bridge page that introduces you, provides context, and explains why they need your product or your service before then sending them to the main sales page. And with this kind of funnel, we are getting their email address. Whereas with a quick results funnel, we may not be. We may just send them straight to a sales page and from that straight to a checkout. Now, the third one is a webinar funnel. Now, this is hugely effective for coaches and consultants. So if that's you, you need to listen into this. And if you want to know more about webinars, as I said, please go back and listen to last week's episode because I really break down the webinars. The idea of this is to attract leads by offering a free, high value training session that addresses a specific pain point. And during that webinar, then you're building trust and authority and you're teaching them something but you're not teaching them so much that they can go and do it all for themselves. So at the end, you can present an offer that could be to come into your course, it could be offering your services, or it could be one-to-one coaching. And the last funnel is the book a call funnel. Now, this is essentially the same as the webinar funnel, but instead of leading straight to coming into your course, your service, and signing up for your one-to-one coaching, you're going to lead them to book a call with you. And this is especially useful if you have something very high ticket where that personal connection to the conversation is, is incredibly important for the prospect to come to a buying decision. Okay, so I've broken down different kinds of funnels. Now, there are so many more funnels. You've got challenge funnels. You've got book funnels. You've got so many different kinds of funnels. I don't want to dive into all of those. And it will really depend on what your service is and what your price point is as to what is the best funnel for you. Now, I want to break down some key marketing terms that tend to get thrown around when discussing funnels and marketing. The very first one is traffic. Now, This basically refers to what we think it is. It's a whole lot of traffic going into one spot. This refers to people who are visiting your funnel. It could be a landing page or it could be webinar registration page or it could be a blog post. And traffic can come from all different sources. It could come from social media. It could come from paid ads. It could come from search engine. So this is the eyeballs. Traffic is the amount of people who are seeing what you have going on. The next term is a lead. Now, a lead is someone who has already shown interest in your offer and they've usually already offered their contact information in exchange for maybe a lead magnet, that's something free that you're offering, or an ebook, or to come into your free training or to watch your sales page. So they've genuinely shown interest, they've given you their details. And now they can move into that next step. That's what a lead is. You've captured their email address. The next one is a prospect. So a prospect is a lead that's already been nurtured and is more likely to take action, like booking a call or purchasing your service. They're already right down the funnel and they're very interested. So they've become a prospect. Conversion. A conversion is when a lead takes a desired action in your funnel. So that could be a conversion could be they've signed up and they've given you their email address. A conversion could be that they have booked a call with you, or it could be that they have made a purchase. So the goal of any funnel is to increase your conversions. Okay, lastly, I want to talk about tracking and analytics. 
Tracking is crucial to understanding where your customers are coming from and how effective your funnel is. So by using tracking codes and conversion snippets on your pages, you can then see exactly how many people are visiting your funnel, where they're dropping off, and how many are converting. So this information is really crucial for making then data-driven decisions and being able to optimize your funnel so that you get better results. Now, I know we're diving a bit deep here and you might be thinking, oh my gosh, Lisa, that sounds so complicated. But here's the thing. When you have someone showing you how to do it step by step, it's actually quite simple to set it up. But then if you try to go it alone and you try to just take this information and let's see if you can make it on your own, the chances are you're going to end up with a big broken mess. And that's a funnel that just doesn't work. The connections are not working. You, you, things are out of alignment. Things are breaking down. And, and that just is not going to aid your business at all. So it has to be set up strategically and it has to be optimized and tested to make sure that everything is working the way it should. Okay, I'm going to give you now a little step-by-step -step guide to crafting your very first funnel. I want to keep it simple, but just give you this step-by-step -step guide. The very first step is you need to define your goal. So start by working out what you want your funnel to achieve. Is it to build your email list? Is it to book more discovery calls? Or is it to sell your course? So the clearer you are about your goal, then the easier it's going to be to create a funnel that is really going to convert. The second thing is you can create a lead magnet. Offer something valuable for free in exchange for an email address. So this could be a checklist, it could be a free ebook, it could be a short video series, it could be a webinar. And the key is to make sure that it solves a real problem for your audience. Okay, the third step is to create a landing page. This is a simple one page website where your audience can exchange their email for your lead magnet. You keep it clean, you have a strong headline that captures and hooks in your audience, maybe a few bullet points about the benefits and a clear call to action. You might even have a video on this page where you're talking about what your offer is and how it's going to help your audience to get over that pain point that they have. Okay. Number four is you're going to set up an email sequence. So when someone signs up, you don't just leave them hanging. You need to then send out a series of emails that offer value, that build trust, and ultimately guide them towards taking a next step, whether that's booking a call with you, whether that's buying your product. And these emails can be automated. In fact, all of this can be automated. You don't have to go in today and write another email and send that off and tomorrow write another email and send it off. No, you schedule these emails and set them up to fire in an automated sequence. Okay, point number five is to drive traffic to your funnel. That's the last point. You can't drive traffic to it unless the funnel is set up. And to drive traffic, you can use your social media, you could use paid ads. You could use blog posts to drive traffic to your landing page. And the more targeted your traffic, the higher your chances of converting. Let me solidify this with an example. Okay, let's imagine a, a fitness coach. You're a fitness coach and you're looking to get more clients. So you can start with a lead magnet. Create a free seven-day workout plan that's tailored for beginners. You then create a simple page where visitors can sign up to receive that workout plan. You then send out the emails. You start with a welcome email that delivers the workout plan. You follow that by a series of emails that provide tips on fitness, personal stories, success stories, and finally, an offer for maybe a one-to-one -one coaching session. Now, to get people into this funnel, you could be using Facebook ads that are targeting fitness enthusiasts. 
Or you could share engaging posts on your social media with a call to action to go and get your free resource. And all of this is driving traffic to your landing page. Here's another example. A business consultant. So a business consultant could create an ebook. Let's say it could be titled Top 10 Business Strategies for 2024. Then you create a landing page. It needs to have a professional look because you're a consultant and it's have a strong headline that demonstrates the benefits of the ebook, how it can overcome their specific pain points. We call this the hook. And then we have a single call to action button, download now. So from there, you're going to again send them into an email sequence. So your first email will be delivering that ebook and introducing yourself. The second email would be providing a brief overview of the first two strategies in that ebook. And then the third email could be you're sharing a case study of how a client used these strategies to get results. And then the fourth email could be inviting them then to a free strategy session where you're going to highlight the benefits. So the traffic sources for a business consultant could be LinkedIn, LinkedIn ads, could be articles that you publish on different industry websites. You could use Google ads that target business keywords. Okay, so now you've got some ideas on how to build your funnel. Let's say you've built your funnel. Let me give you some solid tips then on how to optimize your funnel so that you really get the maximum results. The first thing I'm going to say is keep it simple. Focus on one goal at a time and avoid trying to sell multiple different products or services within one funnel because just like a website, that's just going to confuse people. Make sure you do testing. Experiment with different hooks, different headlines, different email subject lines, and different call to action buttons, even the color of the button to see which one performs better. Then use the data. Track the performance of every step in your funnel using tools like, well, depending on where you're setting your funnel up, if it's click funnels, if it's funneler, if it's Kartra, they all have built in analytics. And this is going to help you to pinpoint where people drop off. Now, if you're creating your funnel within your website, then you can use Google Analytics to give you some information there. But I highly recommend if you're going to create your funnel, do it in a specific funnel building software. And the one that I highly recommend is a software called Funneler. It's quite new to the market and it's a great competitor to ClickFunnels, if you've heard of ClickFunnels. And in my opinion, I've been using it for over a year. It is the best funnel building software on the market. Okay. That's my little rant, and I'll put a link down below where you could go and check out Funneler. Next point is to offer real value. Make sure that if you're going to put out a lead magnet and email content to people, then it has to really offer value. It shouldn't just be salesy and constantly pitching something to people. You really have to talk to them where they're at, understand your audience, offer something of immense value, because that's more likely to then build trust and then take your prospect to the next step. Okay, the fifth point I want to share with you is to constantly stay engaged with your audience. And this is one of the biggest mistakes that I see people making who set up their funnels. They set it up and they think, okay, it's all just set and forget. And they forget to nurture the back end. I can tell you most of the sales occur on the back end. So Make sure that you continue to engage with your audience, to follow up with them, and to send them really high quality content, followed by some promotions to them every so often. So you're balancing it out. Okay, now let's highlight some of the biggest pitfalls that you should avoid. The first one is to ignore the data. If you don't pay attention to the data then you're going to miss opportunities to optimize and your funnel will not be performing as well as it could be. If you're too pushy, bombarding potential clients with sales pitches is just going to turn them off and they'll eventually unsubscribe. And then that lack of personal connection. If you're just constantly sending out generic emails that don't speak directly to your lead, to your prospect, 
then you're going to have a lower engagement rate on those emails. So make sure you're looking at the open rates, you're looking at the click through rates and all of this data is so important. I think I need to do a whole other episode on how to analyze the data in your funnel. Okay, I'm going to share a couple of real life success stories that I've experienced. Sarah is a digital course creator. Uh, She was struggling to get signups for her online course. She has a beautiful website, but she wasn't getting conversions. So my recommendation to her was to build a funnel. Well, the result? Within just three months, her course enrollments increased by 40%. She used a free webinar as her lead magnet, and then she followed it up with a series of emails which then transitioned smoothly into her course and her offer. And then there's Jane. Jane is a life coach and she was struggling to find clients for her life coaching business. But after setting up a funnel with a free stress relief guide as the lead magnet, she then went on to nurture through email sequences. And by the end of two months, she had booked in 15 new client sessions and she'd grown her email list by 300 percent. And the last one I want to share with you is Stuart. Stuart is a financial advisor and he used to rely solely on his website to attract clients, but he was having very limited success. So after he put a funnel in place, offering a free financial planning session and an automated email sequence, well, his client inquiries increased by 50 percent in just one month. So creating a funnel, I know it might seem daunting at first, but I can guarantee you it is an investment that pays off by bringing you closer to your potential clients in a structured and a focused way. From understanding what a funnel is and how it differs from a website to learning advanced techniques and seeing real life examples, you can have the roadmap to follow. So to wrap things up, Funnels are all about guiding your potential clients through a clear strategic path to take an action. Like I said, there are different types of funnels for different goals and understanding these key terms that I shared with you and the stages of funnels can make uh, all the world of difference in how you approach your marketing. Now, if you're feeling stuck or you're not sure where to start, don't worry, you're absolutely not alone. All you need to do is reach out We can have a conversation about how we can help you to create a funnel that works for you, that is optimized and automated to bring in high quality clients to your business on autopilot. So if this interests you, then all you need to do is click the link that you'll find in the show notes of this episode. We're offering you a free strategy session where we can talk about your business, what you've got going on and where you're stuck and what you want to achieve to see whether or not this would be the right strategy for you. Okay. And remember, we've got our free guide. So go download that entire blueprint so you can map it out for yourself and get started with your own funnel. All right, everyone, stay confident, keep learning and remember your voice has the power to change lives. Your voice is the top of your funnel. That's where you're going to attract your clients in, nurture them, and then lead them to be loyal followers of you and your services. All right, that's it for today's episode. I'll talk to you in the next episode. Thanks for tuning in to another episode of the Impact Through Voice podcast. Now, if you've reached the end of this episode, then it means you're enjoying the podcast. So I have a quick favor to ask. If you haven't yet subscribed, please go and do it now and even leave us a review because it really does help us so much to reach more people and impact more people. And I would be very, very grateful. Now, I love to read all of your comments about the show and what you're enjoying, what you would like to hear more 
more of. So please take the time and go and do that now. When you do that, please take a screenshot and then tag me on Facebook or Instagram. That's Lisa Hugo Official. You know, I'm going to be sure to share your post and I'm also going to private DM you with a thank you. And it also means you won't miss an episode. And as a subscriber, then you're going to get access to more content that we don't even open up to everybody. So thanks again. And until next time, keep on working towards your goals and making a positive impact on the world with your voice.